Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Your calls and comments will be welcomed, of course, at 254-5678. Jamie Sullivan lives on a farm in Connecticut. Around here, where even a nine-year-old puts in a full day, Prince Egg Noodles have been a favorite for more than 50 years. They taste so good because they're made with just the golden yolks of eggs and a very special kind of flour. But most important, Prince egg noodles are extra nourishing because they're enriched with added vitamins. Today is Wednesday, and today Jamie Sullivan can't wait for dinner. Usually Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day. But Wednesday at the Sullivan Place, for as long as anyone can remember, has been Prince Egg Noodle Day. But that's okay with Prince. Hi, this is Larry Glick, and I'll be seeing you in three hours on Radio 103. Where entertainment is concerned, WBZ Boston, Group W, Westinghouse Broadcasting. It's a very mild 58 degrees in Boston. Tonight's low will be in the 50s. I'm Ted Larson reporting the 9 o'clock WBZ News. And it's brought to you by Villas on the Green, the exclusive condominium community just north of Palm Beach. England has a new prime minister tonight. Labourite Harold Wilson today regained the post he left in 1970 when his party was defeated by the Conservatives. Over the weekend, former Prime Minister Edward Heath tried to form a coalition cabinet. However, he said today he could not and resigned. In elections last week, the Labour Party was voted a very narrow lead, but it wasn't large enough to have a clear majority. The political crisis in Israel continues tonight. However, one thing is certain, Golda Meir will continue as prime minister at least for the next two days. Yesterday, Mrs. Meir said she was resigning because of a failure to form a minority cabinet. However, the news was met with displeasure from her own Labour Party and leaders pressured her to reconsider her announcement. So Mrs. Meir today changed her mind and said she'd continue to work to form a new cabinet till the legal deadline for such a decision. That deadline is midnight Wednesday. United Press International tonight says Greek billionaire Aristotle Anassis may scrap plans to build his $600 million refinery in New Hampshire. The news service says a spokesman for Olympic refineries thinks a site in Rhode Island might be a better choice. Constantine Gratz has told UPI the Melville Tank Farm at the phased-out Newport Naval Base is an ideal location for the refinery. Gratz said his company is tired of fighting the ecologists who want to ban the oil facility from the Granite State. Federal Judge Lee Gagliardi today said the trial of John Mitchell and Maurice Stans, accused of influence peddling, could continue. WBC Stan Brooks files this courtroom report from New York. Defense lawyers picture John Mitchell and Maurice Stans as honorable men of conscience and integrity who were dragged into court because they had served a president who has since fallen into high disfavor. Mitchell's lawyer, Peter Fleming, told the jury he would prove that the former attorney general did nothing, quote, to fix, to stop, or to influence a federal investigation in favor of Robert Vesco, the fugitive financier who made a secret $200,000 cash contribution to the Nixon campaign in 1972. Fleming referred to the trial as this agony and accused the prosecution of exerting pressure, pressure, pressure on witnesses called before the grand jury. In his opening statement for Maurice Stans, lawyer Walter Bonner said the former Commerce Secretary would take the stand in his own defense at this trial, even though he did not have to. Bonner said Stans had gone before the grand jury twice voluntarily, and in a dramatic statement made with a rare flourish, Bonner said Stans would, quote, rise again and speak again, talking to the jury. Bonner defended Stans' honor, said a Vesco aide never had the guts to ask Stans to get the Securities and Exchange Commission off Vesco's back, as Vesco allegedly had requested. He said he knew he was talking to a man of integrity and the message was never delivered. They knew, Bonner said, referring to Vesco and his aides, that they never had Marie Stans in their pocket. Five witnesses were called after the opening statements, but their testimony dealt with background material and with some matters that were not clearly spelled out. The trial of the two former cabinet officers resumes in the morning. Stan Brooks at the Mitchell Stans trial in federal court, New York. And the WBZ News time now, six after nine. Florida, warm and sunny all year round. Could Florida be in your future? Well, it can in one of the most beautiful and exclusive coastal areas, just 12 miles north of Palm Beach in the lovely town of Jupiter. It's called Villas on the Green. Only three minutes' walk to the warm Atlantic Ocean, Villas on the Green. Beautiful condominiums in a small, exclusive community close to excellent golfing and fishing and boating. Villas on the Green are not the typical high-rise condominiums. They're only two stories, surrounded by sycamores and palm trees and gorgeous lawns and sun. 
with recreation facilities including clubhouse, tennis courts, putting green, heated pool, and much, much more. You can get a brochure about Villas on the Green and Florida Living by sending a card to Villas on the Green, WBZ Radio, Boston, or call Mr. Ed Bennett at Edward Bennett Realty in Wollaston at 471-1014. That's 471-1014. Villas on the Green can put you in the Florida sun. Federal Judge John Sirica today ordered a hearing for Wednesday on the controversial secret report handed him by the Watergate grand jury. The judge said he wants the session to determine the disposition of the report. The White House today said it would have no objections that the president if the report went to the House Judiciary Committee looking into the possible impeachment of the president. Many sources think the report contains the grand jury's feelings about the president's role in Watergate. And a freak accident in Chelsea this morning resulted in the death of one man and injuries to two others. Dominic Matis was killed when the front of a cafe fell on him. The injured were identified as Walter McKay and John Morata. They were hurt when they were trapped underneath the rubble. Right now, here's the balmy weather forecast for Boston and vicinity. Tonight, cloudy and mild. Chance of a few showers will have low temperatures in the 50s. Then on Tuesday, cloudy with scattered showers likely during the morning, becoming sunny by late in the day. Continued very warm. High temperatures in the mid to upper 60s once again. Tuesday night, fair. Low temperatures in the 40s. Then on Wednesday, mostly sunny and mild. High temperatures in the 50s. The WBZ temperature, it's now down to 58. Repeating this hour's top story, England has a prime minister tonight. Labourite Harold Wilson today regained the post he left in 1970 when his party was defeated by the Conservatives. And that is the 9 o'clock WBZ report with portions recorded. It's been brought to you by Villas on the Green. And for more information, write WBZ and write WBZ tomorrow. I'm Ted Larson, WBZ News, reminding you if you've got your BZ ALA printout, don't waste valuable time. Call and form your carpool right away. Once again on BZ Radio, we go back to Jerry Williams. Two five four five six seven eight.